Hello, spiritual warriors. Today we are continuing on soul ties. Now, many of you have been working on your soul ties, um, breaking them, uh, which is just wonderful. I'm excited to hear people seeing progress and breaks in that. But we have to get even deeper into the subject. It's very important. So after you've been breaking the soul ties, and I know that some of you have been writing and asking questions, and I've been seeing the progress of this, but you have to understand that certain things are going to go on when you're breaking these soul ties. Um, the first thing that's very important is that after you break the tie and renounce between you and another person or between you and a place or a pornographic site, after you say those, we need to finalize that with casting out the actual specific spirit so that they're gone. Because you've broken the tie, but the spirit has been there, so you want to cast out that spirit. So you have to say, you know, in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of, let's start with the sexual ones because a lot of you are working in that area. So the category of spirits is spirits of perversion. So you could say in a general sense, I renounce all spirits of perversion in Jesus' name and command them to leave, never again to return. Or you could just, you know, renounce them. Um, whatever you feel more comfortable with. And again, in always in Jesus' name, never, ever, ever us doing anything. We do not have power over demons. We have all power over demons in Jesus' name um, and in his precious blood. So the within a category, as I spoke about a little bit before, are specific spirits. So you would say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of lust, if that's what you were struggling with. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of homosexuality. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of um, fornication. In the name of Jesus, I renounce, and I go, you know the list. You know what the different things are. Um, so you can gather the rest of them from there. I would state them, but I know there'll be some people that'll be like, you don't want to be embarrassed about it. It's not something to be embarrassed about. It's really important, and, you know, it is something that you need to be open about. Um, because it'll help you with, you know, embarrassment as a spirit in itself. So if you get feel like that or if you feel ashamed or if you feel guilty, that's that's all from the enemy. Sexuality in its purest nature in, in the context of a holy, wonderful Catholic marriage or, or sacrament of holy matrimony is a beautiful thing. So those acts themselves... Um, most of them, again, there's spirits of bestiality and spirits of all sorts of bondage and crazy stuff. So obviously not that stuff. Those are spirits of perversion because they're they're not in their natural context. Or adultery, which is sex, you know, sex outside of marriage. All of those things need to be cast out. Um, I was just dealing with something, a, a case with a woman's husband who wanted to bring in uh, some how can I, I'm trying to say this in a confidential way, uh, sexual methods that are against, uh, that are mortal sins. Um, so you have to, as a spouse, say no, because your eternity still matters. And remember, we're here not necessarily uh, to have our spouse make us happy, but to make us holy. That's always the saying, and vice versa. I mean, the most important thing is that you guys are helping each other get to heaven. So if one spouse is trying to get you to do things that are against, uh, you know, God, against the teachings of, of, of true, pure, godly sexuality, you have to say no and you have to pray against that and you have to, you know, help ask. I will ask, you know, a part, if a partner has, if, and I'm, you know, having relationships, holy, pure relationships, but if I feel that someone that I'm dating is having lustful thoughts against me, then I ask them. Because remember, we can't do it for them. We can't infringe on their free will. But I'll say, will you please renounce the spirit of lust? Because like, I, get, I don't want that coming around me. And I don't want that around our relationship. So you can renounce those specific spirits. And again, in soul ties, when you're breaking those, there can be other things that are, like I was saying, spirits of unforgiveness in other categories. Spirits of resentment. In Jesus' name, I renounce the spirit of bitterness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of loneliness. I work with so many people who the original um, entry of the enemy was not 
a sexual perversion. That jumped on top of that. Think of it as like a rubber band or a ball, tinfoil balls. That's how the priests always would describe it and touch it. It's like you've got to break off one layer and then there's something underneath it. You always want to get to what the, the, the core layer is. Um, and often, some people, it is sexual. That is their root sin. And that is where the, the, the core of what you need to break off and out of. However, some people it's not. Some people it's a spirit of loneliness. Some people, it's, you know, it's a spirit of insecurity. It's something that goes back to wounds because they were, you know, abused as a child, sexual abuse, um, or, you know, any kind of abuse um, in these wounds, or they were bullied, they were made fun of, and they believe things. So this is bringing you to the next section, which is you also want to really pray about, and this, again, it's not like necessarily and some of them will break right away but some things take a little bit longer and if you feel something not breaking for example you had a soul tie with someone but and you were breaking it but you can that is not broken yet why is that one not broken those other three broke why did that not break and that can be that there's something else that is attached to that either you know you haven't forgiven them is there an occult connection there where you need to break off whatever curse was placed there or it could be a self curse where you said you know I would never forgive that person or I'll never find someone again or they said that to you I'll never find somebody again words are extremely powerful um, and thoughts thoughts are extremely powerful so um, one thing that I do again I, I am an advocate for um, for unbound where they talk about it and I love this as an inner record what's playing your subconscious inner record and what lies do you believe from the enemy this is in my this is in pure power this is in my book chapter I think it's chapter two or three but it's it's busting the enemy's lies and replacing it with God's truth you may believe there's this one gentleman I've been working with, but he just he does not want to to not believe this but somebody told him that you know he would never be successful and so he believes that he would never be successful. Um, renouncing that, you know, replacing it with God is going to make me successful. God wants me to use my gifts. God, renouncing the lie and replacing it with the truth. Um, and a lot of the sexual lies that we tell each other, like, I, are, I it's too late for me. You know, I can, I can never be pure. All of these are lies from the enemy. And so you want to renounce those. And I've even in the past when I've been working on a certain area, I will write those down. I will write down the lies and then I will renounce them in Jesus name and I will replace them. Cause again, that can be in your subconscious. It can be something that's continuing on and the Lord is trying to place it with his word and with the Holy spirit. So these are other uh, more advanced areas of soul ties as you continue on that journey. Um, I also, have to say that I have seen multiple, multiple times um, when we did decide to burn, burn lies, the, the things that were written, or burn, you know, the people's names. Like we would write down everybody's names that whoever had sexual relationship with. And what is incredible is that you can, and I don't mean incredible like, uh, like giving it power. I mean incredible like, God will reveal it's God that's allowing it so it's not the enemy having power but you can burn a piece of paper that should burn like that right if you light up a piece of paper in a safe place in a fire pit or you know some somewhere very safe not outside around you know bush don't don't try this at home boys and girls it has to be in a very very safe environment but the point is if you if you light fire to all these names if something's not breaking or if something's still holding on to something or if you're still holding on to something, I've seen this at so many of my conferences that I've done, people that I've individually helped, uh, that the Lord has been, you know, working through me, that piece of paper will not burn. It will burn the, the nine other names and that piece of paper, you can light it on fire 20 times and it won't burn. And so we've literally had to pray for a full hour with a group of people to get this one little name or one spirit to burn and it's because that person still has to release that. They haven't released it in the spiritual realm. Remember, the spiritual realm and the physical realms are connected. Um, so 
I think I'll stop here because, again, a lot of information, um, very, very good stuff that the Holy Spirit is doing. Um, but I know that there's a lot to it, and there will be many questions. Thank you for your patience on me answering. Um, I'm going to keep trying to take the questions, most likely, and then putting those into the weekly videos. I think that that's the best as, as our community is, is growing and coming together. Um, and, it, and people are helping each other, I notice, because people will have similar questions or, or really be working together in that regard. So please subscribe below. Hit the bell um, so you'll get notified in the next video. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. And I truly am praying for you. And our prayer team is praying for you daily. God bless.